Hey everyone, I thought I would record this session and then upload it. We, you know, we sort of ran out of time. So this session here is around team charter. So you would have done your uh, pre-work and your homework to start crafting this team charter. What I know about teams, what I know about businesses, look, we all agree on the goal, but it's how people get to that goal that actually is the derailer that stops us achieving what we need to do. And a lot of the issues are around people not being aligned, people not having that clear direction, and then the communication going back and forth just not happening. Also, it's around behaviors too. So when we, um, so this is why it's really important to do team charts. When I've done this in businesses, um, you just end up, you end up succeeding a lot quicker than what you would uh, if you didn't have a sort of team charter. And I know within an organization and a hierarchy, um, there are sort of certain things you can and, and cannot do. What I would say is you as, as the maybe head of the department, you as the, the team leader or the manager, this is your team, right? The reason people have problems in teams because they don't grab the team together at the start of the year, the start of the quarter and sort of galvanize everyone's minds towards a common goal and a common purpose. That's why you have problems within teams. So this is a hack and this is designed for you to watch this, implement uh, you know, use the, the presentation, change it, make sure it's all um, your own branding and, and things like that. Use the agenda and to deliver it yourself. Uh, it can be a little bit daunting, but this is where I can help you with it. So I can help you implement this. Okay. <clears throat> so let's get to it. So what we're going to be covering in, in the agenda for this is what is a vision for 2021, your purpose, your objectives, flush out all the challenges at the start so we can actually just get rid of all the negative all the issues and challenges and we can put them in the parking lot look at team communication how we communicate when how how often and what medium then we're looking at team behaviors so for us to be successful what are two or three behaviors we need to start um, behaving like taking the action to be successful and then it all comes together within a team action plan okay 90 days which is a really great sprint of a quarter uh, will really, you know, give, it, give everyone that laser focus. So let's look at the objectives. And again, you can change all of these slides uh, to create and refine a vision for your team to create and identify your purpose, um, develop our, and look at the words and music, our, ours, our purpose, our business objectives, how we can communicate. It's all around inclusiveness that they feel um, included within this whole session. Um, and then look, identify the behaviors and agree for the next uh, next night days. This can be done in two, uh, in half a day or a whole day um, via Zoom, via face to face. OK, it just depends on what's going to work best for your team. So I always start with ground rules. There are nine of them uh, to expand on all of those. There are notes within the notes section on, on the slide here. Um, what I like to do is just, again, you know, it's all around inclusiveness. So I always start with rules of engagement. So how do we communicate? How do we challenge each other? Because we said that um, dysfunctional teams, they, they avoid conflict. So what we need to be doing is to sort of not mind for it, but just be open to it as well. I think big picture, this session is around two to five years, thinking big, not too much of the details. Again, think outcome, outcome. Think future-based, assume positive intent. Again, if you have any uh, conflict, it's probably because your opposite styles may be on the disc profile, as an example. I always whack this in here, the parking lot. So the parking lot, this is designed for any items that you need to, dis that, uh, uh, need to discuss that fall outside of the session. So we can, so if someone starts taking the team uh, down a, uh, a rabbit warren, we can say, hey, can I just stop it there? It sounds like this is in the parking lot. So let's put it in the parking lot and pick it up outside of this session. Uh, clear, concise, we'll get you it. Uh, get everyone's issues and concerns on the table, up front, on a flip chart, um, you know, in, in the presentation, because what you can do, you can, um, you know, everything's out in the open. So then you can move forward. If everything is still internal, then you're never going to get past it. Um, again, depends on, depends on your group, how open they are. Uh, but I always, you know, always do this at start. Any intros, if you need to do any intros, uh, if there are any new members of the team and things like that. 
assign roles and responsibilities for the session. So you've got chairperson, facilitator, participant, timekeeper, the scribe is really important. So who's going to make all the notes and then a minor. So a minor is uh, the role is to see both sides of an activity and then monitor the team for conflict uh, pretty much. So um, again, you can have little team leaders and I'll unpack this later, little team leaders to lead different activities as well, but give them a part to play um, because they'll feel more included and you'll get better results and be more engaging. Now, this is the pre-work that you need to do before. So what is the vision for 2021 for your team? How does that fit into the vision, the overall vision for, for the university, for CQU, right? And you need to just put it in there. Whether it is a carbon copy from the university's one, that's up to you. Um, but, it, you know, it's aspirational, future-based, two to five years ahead, um, basically, it, cap it, ca it captures the essence of the final result that the university wants to achieve, right? And it's you've got to sell this. It's your job to sell it. As the leader, you need to sell, motivate, inspire, um, because it's where you want to be, right? So you need to over-communicate this, if anything else, okay? Then we have the purpose. And again, the slides don't need to be up for long. Um, I would probably forward um, in the pre-work, I'd probably give them the vision and the purpose up front. Uh, so then they've got time to actually uh, unpack it, break it down and, and think about it. Purpose. Now, our purpose, if it is, you know, you, you work in the Office of Student Success, for example, your purpose is around student enrichment, is around providing service for students, great customer service. That's why you're here. You're here to serve the students. So it's around what we do, what makes us different. It's present state rather than future state. So vision is future. Present is right now. So that's your purpose. It's a reason why you do what you do, right? A reason why you get out of bed. Who are your key stakeholders within that? What service do you provide? So it's quite descriptive. But again, make it really simple to understand. Eighth grade reading level, two to th four building blocks. Um, and yeah, avoid long, complicated things, all right? So that is the pre-work already done. Um, what you could find is your team, they may go, oh, hold on, can we just refine that? When you're looking at a, at a real like department, I work for the Faculty of uh, Health Sciences in ACU, and the, the time for crafting the vision and the purpose took about three to four months because it went back and forth, back and forth. Uh, so you just have to bear that in mind, okay? Now, we move on to the objectives. So what are the objectives uh, for 2021 for your team, right? So it's taken from the big business plan, it cascades down, and it's like, okay, what are we here to do? What are our objectives? And this is where you go, right, here are our top four, four objectives. And it has to be aligned, quantifiable, it has to have deadlines as well. Um, now, here is, the, here is the secret sauce with objective setting. It is you as a leader, you just present the four, maybe five business objectives top level. Then what you do, you break your team down. Say if you've got four objectives, break them down into teams of four in the breakout rooms and say, right, you've got objective number one, you've got objective number two. I'm going to give you 10 minutes and I want you to write how you're going to achieve that. And again, it's made up of short medium and long-term goals, right? So the long-term goal is your objective. The medium term is the strategies. So these are the bigger things and I'll show you an example in a minute. And then what are the day-to-day -day actions that you need to do to achieve that objective? Get them to do it. Don't do it before because that then is disempowering. And you as a leader, you need to be focusing on other things, right? So you, you don't need to be focused on how people get to do their day jobs, right? You're an enabler, you help people get there by asking really great questions. So what does this look like? I've got a template and look, you've got templates and I don't want to confuse it or anything like that, but this is a template that I've been using and it's worked really well in most organizations. Um, it's just a strategic planning document for your team. So with this one here, it's what is the theme? Uh, so for this team, this was, this was Macquarie Bank and their theme was to go from good to great. So that's their sort of vision and purpose. So everything that they did was good, but was it great? And they were able to challenge each other, each other's ideas to say, look, is that, it's good, but is it great? So that sort of sets the, the theme for the year. Um, and to generate $200 million in sales in that year, they actually did it in nine months and ended up with 320 million um, in new sales. And this is, this is the source, right? So here are the four objectives. So increase capacity, gain a reputation, develop and launch a new product, develop high level of teamwork. 
Those were what the, the manager of that department did and then said, right, okay, team one, team two, team three, team four, I want you to go away and work out how you're going to get there. And this is the medium term now. So these strategies are the medium term. These are the big pieces. Maybe they're projects that last two to three weeks, maybe a month or two months uh, that all go towards that one objective. So on here, they say, right, uh, so increase capacity of the sales team, recruit and train 11 more BDMs. Again, that's a massive task in itself. Train existing BDMs, set in place new stretch targets, create rewards. And they did that for all of them. Then they got smart and said, right, we need to prioritize them, which is from one to uh, 14, the most um, priority from one to 14. And then what that does, that tells people that they should be working on priority one, two or three instead of 14 and 13, right? Uh, so when you're then having your one-on-ones, you can just keep them accountable a little bit and go, hey, can you just stop there? Because we need to, you need to go back to number three because it's not completed yet. Now, the next part of this is you take your top four and then you go, right, so the first one was train 11 BDMs. This is a project in itself. Um, Dave, this is your project. I want you to do the tasks. And these are the day-to-day actions that you need to do because what it does, it, it shows to you that they're competent at doing it right? Because they've gone through. So then instead of you going, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that, you go, hey, 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 Dave, how are you getting on with that? So let's have a look at your list. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, have you thought of anything else? Um, what about this? What about that? You're not giving them the answers, but that then gives them their direction, right? So that gives them, uh, and then you can monitor that. You can tick it off because it's in the doing of ticking off all these little tasks. They'll achieve the medium term goals and then achieve the, the bigger picture. Okay. Um, look, if you want that, you need to contact me about that, or you've you've got um, your own, you've got your own ones um, that you use. So, um, again, it's around empowering them to come up with the answers, and for you to have the confidence to go, okay, um, it's you know, it's not all um, me who who decides all of this stuff. Okay, so um, let's go back into there. Right, so. Let's have a look. Uh, so present the objectives, yes. And then and then identify the roles and responsibilities, right? So who is responsible for what? Who is the decision maker? Uh, who are we and what are we individually responsible for? This is on the um, team charter the template. So name, role, responsibility, any notes. I like to use the racy model. So who is responsible? Who's accountable? Who's consulted and who's informed? So what you have on there, you have your project tasks down the left. You have your, um, not names of people, but the positions and the roles. Okay. And then you work out, well, who's responsible for this project? Um, who's accountable? Who's consulted? Who's informed? So when you're sending emails, uh, having team meetings, you can just have this up and say, hey, here is, and this is the process, right? Here is the process of how we make decisions. Um, who, you know, who's going to be accountable for that ultimately. So again, you can Google all of that stuff. Again, I, I use this because it, it works pretty well. Um, what are the challenges? So we've identified what the objectives are. And again, the objectives thing, when you're looking at that, I would say probably 10 minutes in a team. Um, and if you're doing it in, you know, and you're, you are in a, uh, a big room, then I'll get them to just rotate around. So 10 minutes, and then rotate to the next objective, the next one. So it's like a bit of a, a carousel around because you'll get other people's views and opinions. You could do that in your breakout room. So just give them five minutes to review what's happened, go around, and then they present it back. Okay, so th that is probably around two hour. That's a two hour activity minimum uh, to look at that. Then we look at, okay, we know that. What are some of the challenges that could derail us from success uh, based on those? So internal, external just unpack it and, and you, you're the facilitator on this one. So you just write it, see what comes, see what comes out. Because again, it comes back to those issues and concerns at the start. Team communication, how do we communicate? So um, how do we do it? When should we meet and how often? Uh, what should we discuss in the meetings? Frequency of one-on-one's expectations of communicating with customers, for example. So um, again, this is in the, uh, in the workbook on there. So we're just going through all of those. So for me, the most important one on there really is um, what should what should um, we discuss at the meetings? And it goes into that sort of thing. Are we having a, a weekly WIP meeting? Are we having a fortnightly or a monthly team meeting? Are we having a quarterly meeting? Uh, or is it a strategic meeting? So it's identifying what you're going to talk about at each different level. 
get your one-on-ones in every fortnight or if it's remote maybe it is once a week or you, you're checking in definitely once a week okay so just flush it flushing them out as best you can and then this one here team behavior so I always just throw it up there. What three words do you think best describe our team right now? So you're looking, here is the current environment. Um, and then you're looking at, okay, what three words you, would you prefer to use when describing our team? So it's a bit like a future-based thing. So uh, what would you describe um, our team right now? Maybe, yeah, it's busy. Um, it's reactive and um, tired, right? So what three words would you prefer to use? Dynamic, maybe. Um, proactive and uh, solutions focused uh, as an example. So then those three then become a little bit of a, uh, a guide. So then you evaluate people in team meetings in one-on-one say, hey, was, were you being proactive there or is that going back to your behaviors of reactiveness? Are you being solutions focused or are you being reactive and no can do attitude? So you can then start, and, and this is the beauty of a team, is people start keeping themselves accountable, right? Because it's out there, it's clear, it's out there. And, you know, it's not that hidden, you know, uh, but below the surface. So I always like this question, what three behaviors do, you, do we tolerate in our team uh, that are counterproductive? And then what three behaviors should be non-negotiable? You can give these up front, right, as the pre-work. Uh, because what I have found working at universities is that a lot of people are reflective, they are that CNS behavior types, not all the time, but what they like is information up front for them to then read it and then digest it. So then when you come to these sessions, it doesn't feel like you're being ambushed. Again, so this is a really great tool. So if you've got DISC, use DISC for the behaviors. Um, but this one here is above and below the line uh, behavior, really simple and easy to understand. So you've got the line and it's around, are we but above the... Uh, are we choosing to be above the line or are we choosing to be below the line? So as, a, and we always want to be above the line, right? So as above the line, you're a victor, you take ownership, you, you have a acceptance of your current reality and what you, you're able to do and you take responsibility. It's more thinking like an adult, right? You're taking control, you are making decisions, you are positive because you're making a choice. Um, but we probably know some of these people that fall below the line, so they blame uh, the system, they blame the students, maybe they blame other people, they make excuses and, and then they're in denial, right? Almost like a, a child, like, right? So it goes into that transaction analysis of parent, adult, child. Um, feeling out of control, you know, it's not my job, they're quite negative. Um, and so they get a negative result, right? So um, if you present this, then it's just go, where are you now? Are we above the line as a team or are we below the line? And within team meetings, right, this uh, becomes just uh, embedded within the language that you use over time. Uh, so when you're then talking, it's going, ah, oh, can I just pull you up? That's quite a below the line response there. Um, again, it takes courage, but you, I believe you can do it. So um, here are some of the words that you can use. So uh, being below the line, I can't strike that off your um, vocabulary. You blame others. You do nothing. All you see is problems. You make excuse, uh, excuses. Um, I would just say you are negative, right? So you're always waiting for others. Whereas what you, we need to be thinking around is we need to be solutions focused. What are any options, alternatives and solutions for this situation? Um, respond rather than react take responsibility look at alternatives like look at alternatives take action okay because your event plus your response you give gives you the outcome whether that's positive or minus i used to use this aquantus all the time around how to get the best possible response if you approach it below the line you're going to get a below the line response back which isn't going to be uh, useful whatsoever um, even if you're feeling on your worst day and you've woken up, you stub your toe, you spilt your toothpaste all over your top, you're, you, uh, you're late to work, you've got a flat tire, the train and buses don't work, you attend, you know, you turn up to work, you have a choice of whether you are below the line in your actions, thoughts, behaviors, or above the line. And I'm not saying it's easy, but you need to shift that because now you're in a glass box of emotion, everyone can see you. So if you're acting um, below the line, they're going to act below the line as well. Now, this all culminates, right? It's to go into a 90-day action plan. You can use an Excel spreadsheet, and I've got an Excel spreadsheet. It's like a Gantt chart. Write down all your 
all of your actions for the next 90 days. Okay. Um, and then identify who's, you know, who's doing what, where are the timelines? Um, and then every week we're checking in and that's your metric, right? So we're checking in, here's the spreadsheet and you've got it up, you know, sharing your screen, here's the spreadsheet, right? Have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done that? Oh, great. We're ahead of, we're ahead of task or we're behind task. It gives people really clear sense of um, direction, um, and again, it's, it's that accountable. No one wants to turn up to a meeting and go, oh, sorry, I haven't done it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, if they do that, you say, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do now differently next time? Um, so yeah, team action. What are people going to commit to? You need to put it down in action. Um, and remember, you know, when you're having the team meetings, those action at the, the second part, the action sheet, who's doing what at when, will dictate how much action that, that you actually get. But again, so it's a bit of a typo there, 2020. Um, but again, it all has to be aligned to the objectives, okay? And then really simple, next meeting, here's the date for that. So take it away, change it. If you have any questions around any of that, again, I would probably suggest you do it for like a day uh, if you've got the time. Um, if you, if you get stuck or you want any advice or you've got some tricky people, just let me know. I, you look, I, some, when I do it for a day, I front load the first half of the day with maybe a disc profile with everyone. So they get to know everybody or, or something like that. Um, but it's, again, you are selling the vision, you're selling the purpose, getting them involved in co-creating the objectives. The worst thing to do is to come prepared with everything done already because they, they'll feel like part just worthless. Uh, and people come to work to work and do a good job. Here is the agenda. Here's the team charter agenda uh, that we've got. And I'll attach this as well. So it just gives you an example uh, timelines. Uh, that's half a you know that look, that's half a day. Uh, objectives. I've, I've left forty five minutes uh, for that one. But again, it's um, that that's flexible, right? And you can have a work in morning tea. Uh, where they go away, come back and, and things like that. So we look at team communication, team behaviors, actions, and then what's what's next. So really pretty, um, i say it's there for you to use, okay? Um, you need to be a facilitator. You need to present this, get comfortable with it, uh, real play it. Um, if you're interested, then just um, contact me and um, we can we can go from there. So hopefully that's been beneficial. Uh, and I've covered most of the points there. If you want any information, just uh, let me know. And um, I'll see you in the next session. Cheers.